Clan fans! So, episode 2 of season 5 premiered tonight, and it was definitely a big change from the first episode. It, there was no wedding celebration, obviously, but we got a good look into what the regulators are up to this episode, and it's, uh, not, not pretty. <laughs> so, we see in the beginning that Myrta is leading the regulators and attacking some officials in, where was it, Hillsboro, I think. And this is where the tar and feathering comes in. I kind of wondered if they were going to include that. And they did, as graphically as possible. But, yeah, you see how intense the regulators' cause is getting. We didn't really get a very good look at it in the last season, but this season seems to be a better focus on what the regulators are up to. So Murta is not really being that hard to find because unfortunately three of the men are captured and Jamie is brought in to the town not only to see what the damage is but also to see the prisoners and he wants to he's nervous to see if Murta was captured which thankfully he wasn't but the three men that were are questioned, and the man who's technically Jamie's partner at the moment, I, th I guess I say it as Lieutenant, if I'm saying that right. I used to think it was Lieutenant, but I guess there's the British pronunciation is Lieutenant. So Lieutenant Knox is there, and he is also a big part of trying to find Murta as well. And... While they're questioning the men, the men are not answering. And at one point, one of the men is asked, Where is Murtaugh Fitzgibbons? And he says, I am Murtaugh Fitzgibbons, which is almost like a Spartacus moment. And Knox loses his temper, and he stabs the man to death. Which is not good for him, because he killed a man without trial. And... Jamie is stunned at this act, however, when other British soldiers come in, or the other men come in, <laughs> I don't know if they were soldiers, they question what happened. Jamie actually covers for Knox. He does not want him to get in trouble, and we don't quite know. <sighs> Jamie's a good person, but I don't exactly know why he covered for him. I mean, I'm sure there's a reason, and I'm just not thinking of it, but... Anyway. He and Knox talk later, and Knox is ashamed of his act. He feels like he's become a hypocrite, and he's become what he despises. But he still feels charged to <laughs> go after Murta, unfortunately. So, Jamie, that night goes back to where the prisoners are being held, the two remaining ones, and he actually sets them free. And they're, huh, they're so grateful about it, too. Huh. They basically threaten him, like, it depends on what side you're on, but they feel like he's betrayed his people because he's working for the British, because he sold out for the land. Even though Jamie is not planning to stay with the British the whole time, especially once the war arrives. However, it is the time before the war arrives that he has to play the game, play the part. But of course he can't tell the other men that. And eventually the other two men escape back to where the other regulators are. Murtaugh is there and they point out that Jamie was there and the warning was not to return to Hillsborough. So Murta will listen to that. So in a way, it's kind of working where Jamie is able to give a message to Murta, at least in this instance. But how long that's going to work for, we don't know. <sighs> yeah, this is the part where it gets intense. <laughs> but it'll be interesting to see where the regulators strike next. Um, it looks like they're going to focus like Jamie returns home in the next episode, so I don't know what the next thing is for the regulators. But another interesting thing from the episode is 
Claire is definitely playing her role as a physician. She is trying to save people, however, um, unfortunately there is a patient that does end up dying on her table because there's nothing she can do for him. She learns that Mrs. Farish, I believe was her name, she was trying to treat her husband because he had a pain in his abdomen and she thought she could try to help him by like, what's it called, like the bleeding, bloodletting. And she tried to give him mercury, which we know today not to do that, but they clearly didn't know back then. And Claire is appalled to learn that she made it worse for her husband, who's the patient. So he does end up dying rather instantly in that moment. However, instead of burying the body, Claire decides to use the body for an autopsy because she wants to understand what he died from, and she also wants to use his body to study, like, how she can cure the diseases or the ailments that are going on during that time. And this becomes a big thing where Brie points out, like, this is basically, like, playing God. We aren't supposed to figure these things out for another hundred years or so. But Claire points out that sometimes these things are... Well, like she points out that Brie time traveled back to save them. So she also kind of played God in that respect. And if it wasn't for all the meddling of sorts, <laughs> Brie wouldn't exist, Jemmy wouldn't exist. So it's kind of like, it doesn't just have a negative impact, but it can also have a positive impact. So Claire wants to create that positive impact, if she can. She says one of my favorite quotes in this, which was... Oh, where did it go? <laughs> Sorry, hold on one second. Uh... Yeah, this is when things take forever to load. Okay, so this is my favorite quote of hers. So time, space, history, be damned. Because honestly, Claire has seen it all. She is not afraid to try to change the future for the better. And she knows that in her heart, like, it is going to make a positive impact if she tries. And as we've seen in this show, anytime they try to change the future... Things kind of end up playing out the way they were going to anyway. Like when they tried to stop Culloden, they did literally everything that they possibly could, but they accidentally ended up making it happen. So that's kind of the trick here with time travel. You might think you're changing the future, but you end up making it happen. Which, in this case, maybe Claire is going to figure out a way to make penicillin that won't be fully discovered till 150 years later. I I don't know. <laughs> the show has no rules. <laughs> um so yeah, there was that and she also wants Marsley to partake in helping her as well. She wants her to become an apprentice because she knows how to, well, she sees her butchering a goat <laughs> which that's, that's Marsley's resume right there. And Marsley is at first revolted when she sees the body, but then she does accept the apprenticeship. So it'll be interesting seeing Claire and Marsley work together. And yeah, you'd think Brie would, but when she saw the body, she, she couldn't help but want to vomit. So <laughs> Marsley at least can handle seeing like all the, all that. <laughs> So, speaking of Brie, she and Roger, they have a moment where she's trying to teach him how to shoot with a gun, which he's not very... he's a bad shot. <laughs> and at some point, there is a conversation where Brie knows that Roger wants to go back to the 70s, and he just doesn't feel like he fits in in the 18th century because... He doesn't know what kind of occupation he can do. He also feels like Jamie. 
His father-in-law doesn't respect him. So he just doesn't feel like he fits in. And Brie tries to point out, like, the family is there. She doesn't want to go. And Roger just feels like he only needs Brie and Jemmy. And at one point he's talking to Claire about it. And she actually says that she agrees with him. Which is surprising. I mean, she didn't agree with him because he didn't mention it at first, but she brings it up. Like, as much as I love you here, it's not safe. I hope you go back to the 70s. So the problem with that is that they don't know if Jemmy can time travel. They don't know if he can hear the stones. So that will eventually come into play at some point. Or maybe not till the next season. I don't really remember, but because see what I do is I read some spoilers and based on the books and things change in the show, so it's hard to know exactly what will happen. It's like being a time traveler, guys. <laughs> so yeah, I, I know at some point they probably will go back and I'm not looking forward to that episode because I feel like that's going to be one of the most heartbreaking moments in TV history. And the show has had a lot of heartbreaking moments in TV history. <laughs> I could list them all, but I'm not going to. So, yeah, he also, Roger also discovers that Brie has been drawing Bonnet from her memory. Because in the last episode she learned that he's still alive, he's still wandering around. And she's just very haunted by the fact that he could return any moment. And Roger finds her drawings, and he, it gives him the clue, like, um, okay, this isn't good. She's either still hung up on him, or this could mean that he's still around. Unfortunately, it takes away the moment when Jemmy does his first steps. Oh, and can I say, Jemmy is, like, one of the cutest babies. I love him. I just, I love all the kids in this show. They're adorable. And I'm just, it's so wonderful, like, seeing Marsley and Fergus being parents, and now Brie and Roger. And, of course, there's still the question of if Roger is the actual father of Jemmy. And <laughs> Bonnet, apparently, <laughs> thinks he's the dad. So, speaking of that, <laughs> Bonnet does return in this episode at the very end. He is at a woman's boxing match, which, guys, can I, can I, <laughs> sorry, I'm so in shock by this, I can't talk. I had no idea there were women boxing matches back then, and when I, when I saw that scene, that really, <laughs> that threw me off because I wasn't expecting it, and, I mean, I know nowadays there are, but back in the 18th century, I would not have expected to see that. So, I don't know if that was a thing. If you guys know, please tell me. I'm, I'm genuinely curious. And, I mean, that's interesting if that was. I wouldn't condone it because it didn't look pretty. Let's put it that way. <laughs> women beating up women. Uh, but anyway, that is aside the point. <laughs> so Bonnet is there, and he introduces himself to... Gerald Forbes, who we met last season at Chacosta's house. And Gerald Forbes, I think, is going to play a major part in the whole Stephen Bonnet subplot. And this could be a little payback because Gerald Forbes wanted to propose to Brianna when she was there at Chacosta's house. But it ended up not working out. That's at least what I got from the books. So we'll see if that comes to fruition. But anyway, so Bonnet is there, and he obviously knows... He knew who was going to win the match. And a man calls him out on it. So then, to defend his honor, he duels the man, and he slashes his leg, and in an instant... The guy is down, and he yields. Um, 
unfortunately for the guy, <laughs> Stephen Burnett does not know when to quit. And he continues to scar the man, like, he cuts him, like, here, but jeez, that, ugh, oh, that sounds painful. And he just keeps cutting him up, but then when one of the men asks, aren't you going to kill him? He's like, no, I'm trying to set an example. After all, I'm a dad now. Ugh, no. So that means he's definitely aware that he still remembers <laughs> Brianna and the child. Bad confirmation to get. So, yeah. We, we can look forward to more Bonnet. Yay. Okay, so <laughs> let's talk about the episode overall. I will say it wasn't as exciting as episode one. Definitely there was a lot of setup, like we're getting more of like what the regulators are up to, how Jamie is really caught between the fires, which episode title. <laughs> caught between between two fires, I think is what it was called. And he's it's gonna be a big struggle for him because it's not just Murtaugh, but it's also his people that he's kind of He's trying not to betray them, but it's obviously seen as a betrayal because he's kind of working as a double agent in a sense. He's helping the British, but he's also helping the regulators. So it's going to be a really tough spot for Jamie. And Roger and Brianna, they're going to definitely have some issues after Roger's discovery. <laughs> but I, I feel like it's going to be a tough thing for them to get through, but I think they will obviously get through it. And this episode proved that, because for once, there was like a moment when you thought they were going to fight about going back to the future, but they actually, they didn't fight. So I think that shows that there is definitely some growth in their relationship, which I was really hoping to see this season because you kind of got the one moment in the last episode of season four where he returns and they make up. That's kind of the only growth you really see from that as they're together. But obviously with Bonnet, it's going to be a little tougher. I feel like an argument will ensue, but hopefully it won't last too long. And Claire, I know people are very... They don't like this quality that Claire has, where, you could call it a quirk, where she feels like she has to save lives, even like in a time when it's just, you have to accept that this is what happens, this is how people die, you can't change it, but she can't let it go. And I know people have a problem with that, especially back in season three, but honestly, it's kind of a quality that is troublesome, but at the same time, it's like you have to admire Claire for it because she wants to make a difference. She wants to give not just her life, but the purpose of her time traveling purpose. Kind of like how Galus, she had the purpose, she went back in time, and she had asked Claire, why are you here? And Claire said, I don't know. I don't know why I was brought here. I don't even know if I can go back. Like, that moment is kind of coming back now, where she actually is trying to figure out how can I utilize my time travel ability. So, in a way, you have to admire that Claire is actually trying to do something positive with it. That's just how I look at it. It doesn't have to be how everyone looks at it, but it's just... One thing I like to do is just kind of give people the benefit of the doubt. There's times when you can't, I'll admit, but with Claire, it's complicated, but also I think there's a reason behind it. So yeah. So what'd you guys think of the episode? I honestly thought it was good. Like I said, not as exciting as the first episode. That episode really brought tears to my eyes and it was beautiful and... There were so many things I left out in my other video, but I can only talk about so many things. There's just so much to talk about. But yeah, I 
I feel like this episode was definitely setting up, officially setting up the season. Like, there were the complications, obviously, in the first episode, but this episode showed how those complications are happening. So I look forward to the next episode. It looks like Jamie tells Claire about Stephen Bonnet, and they assume that Bree doesn't know. And they're also going to introduce a new character, or characters, the Beardsleys, which I have heard of them. And it's not looking good. Just from that trailer that I saw. So, I don't remember what happens with them, but something... I feel like something bad happens, so it'll be interesting to see. Alright guys, tell me what you thought of the episode. Um, like, do you think like you'd watch it again? Or just like it's a skip? I'm curious. And also let me know, Lieutenant, just the British term, right? <laughs> I just want to make sure I'm getting all these facts accurate. Alright guys, I will see you for episode three. Have a good day. Bye.